Hi there! Today I'm going to show you how to remove objects you can't see behind in Mocha Pro. I'm Mary Poplin, our Los Angeles product specialist. As a product specialist, one of the questions I get asked a lot is how do you remove an object in Mocha Pro when you can't see behind the object? In this case, I need to make a phone and a motor generic by removing recognizable marks. This works for beauty work, removing blemishes or scars, removing white lines from roads, and altering other surface characteristics. To do this, I need to track a planar surface and make a clean plate to replace the undesired pixel data with. Alright, let's get started. First we're going to track the planar area that the object we want to remove is on. I use X-splines to draw a shape around the planar surface I'm trying to track. I then use the surface and grid tool to more or less align a false geometry to the area I'm trying to track. I make sure that the grid lines up roughly to what I think the planar surface is doing and then I simply track forwards and backwards. Obviously, this isn't tracking in real time. I like to hit play in my timeline to try to watch the track at speed in order to double check my work. In this tutorial, I'm going to try to do a more complex remove than you normally see in our videos. I want to show you my thought process as I try to solve this shot from scratch. Since I'm removing the logo off this phone and also the logo off the motor, I'm going to need to track the planar surface of the phone as well as the planar surface of the motor. Just like my previous track, I grab the X-Spline and I draw a shape around the plane I want Mocha to track. Again, I'm using my surface and grid tool to align a reference point for me to check my track with. As I track forward and backwards, I want to make sure to keep an eye on that grid and make sure that it's not squishing, warping, popping, or otherwise showing me that my track is bad. I can see with my phone here that I'm going to have to go ahead and adjust the X-Spline in order to avoid the fingers and other parts of the hand that are throwing my track off. So I'm quickly going to adjust those and then retrack my surface. A neat trick for tracking and rotoscoping is to hit the stabilize button at the top of the Mocha view screen. This will allow you to center your focus around the spline or the track that you're trying to create. As my track moves off screen, I can clip the head of the shot to make sure that Mocha ignores that section. Now I can just play through the shot and check my work. It's very important to have a rock solid track on the area you're trying to replace. Otherwise Mocha will be unable to do a very good job on the replacement itself. At this point, with my tracks complete, I'm going to zoom in here and start defining the area that I need to remove on this plane, which is to say the phone. I draw my X-spline and make a finer roto shape, and then I link that roto shape to the planar track I created. I use both the Uber key and the Auto key to adjust my roto shapes to how I want them. When I work on removes, I like to make sure that I have a buffer zone of several pixels around the object I'm trying to remove. This is to account for any blur that happens in the shot. Otherwise, I can get a stepping error as Mocha leaves part of the blur on the background. Having wrapped up my shape for the cell phone, I'm going to move over to this H and try to remove it from the scene. Just like with the cell phone, I link the H shape to the larger planar data. Now, one of the things you'll notice, and this is where we start to get into the workflow aspect of things, is that the original track I did is not good enough to give me a solid remove. You can tell this by the way the surface and grid tool are warping and popping all over the screen. In order to fix this, I'm going to have to fix this shape, which means I'm going to have to delete my old shape and build new shapes to track. Now as I track forward and backwards, I can see that the H is not enough data. I'm going to have to draw extra shapes in order to get the information that I need for a solid track. Essentially my workflow is that I keep adding to the X-Spline layer until I get the results I desire. That is to say, until the track is locked solidly on. I play through my shot again just to double check that everything is correct, paying close attention to my grid and surface tool, and then I come in and start to add my finer roto shape for my remove. Just like last time, I use the X-Spline and link it to the background track. When doing removes, it's always important to note that the object removal layer has to be over a larger background layer in order to get any sort of result. Layer order is very important in Mocha Pro. Now that our phone and motor background tracks are complete, and now that our foreground shapes that are going to be removed are clearly defined, we can move on to the Remove tab. In the Remove tab, we will need to create a clean plate. Simply click Create and Mocha will save a clean plate base for you. All you have to do is load up Photoshop and paint a single clean frame. In this case, frame 69. We'll just open up our file and begin to paint out our undesirable pixels. Okay, let's zoom in. Using a Wacom tablet and the Clone and Heal tools in Photoshop, I quickly paint out the logos that I need removed from this shot. I use lots of small samples in order to get better results. The trick is you don't want it to look cloned, you want it to look as if the logo was never there. 
You may have to work with varying opacities in order to get good results. I cannot stress enough how awesome the Heal tool is in Adobe Photoshop. In general, I'd like to point out how useful it is to paint with a tablet. I find that using a tablet pen can increase my speed in both rotoscoping and painting. When I was first learning how to use a pen, it was hard to break the mouse habit. But then I realized that painting with a mouse is about as useful as painting with a brick. I usually do all of my finishing on clean plates and other matte paintings with the heel tool in order to make everything blend properly. Once your clean plate is complete, simply save it and go back to Mocha Pro. Mocha will remember your clean plate and what frame you took it from. In shots where I've only painted one clean plate, I like to make sure I use the linear illumination model to make sure that my lighting is correct throughout the scene. Using the zoom tool, I'm just going to move in here and check my render. In my test render here, I can see that there's a hard edge on the shape I was trying to remove. I can fix this by adding a softness in edge width. This should get rid of any hard edge artifacts that I had in my shot. Moving on to my phone remove, I'm going to turn my mats off and do a test render. Well, it would help if I loaded a clean plate clip. So what I need to do is I need to import the clean plate that I made for my other layer. Or I can use the clean plate that I used to remove the H. But I want to show you guys how to import a clean plate. I simply open it up and put it back in at the frame I took it from, in this case, frame 69. And then I do a test render. And just like on my other remove, I'm going to zoom in here to check my work. I'm going to turn illumination modeling on for this as well, since the phone is tilting slightly and subtly throughout the shot. I'm pretty happy with the way both of my test renders are looking, so now I'm going to move on to trying to render them both at once. This is pretty easy just so long as the gears are checked on, so that Mocha's remove module knows to remove those layers. As I get towards the head of the shot though, I'm going to have to stop rendering my phone, as that will mess up my dual renders. To do that, I just pause my render and turn the gear off for the foreground phone layer. I then play through my scene to double check my work. And that is how you remove objects in Mocha that you can't see behind. Alright, recap time. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we did while I show you a before and after. So essentially, the steps we take for removing an object you can't see behind are track a background layer, rotoscope a foreground layer, click on the remove tab, create a clean plate, and clean up that clean plate in Photoshop. And then render using Mocha Pro's remove tool. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you, and please let us know if you have any questions. Please visit us on our website, www.imagineersystems.com, or check out our blog. We also have a forum if you have any questions, and a Facebook page, slash Imagineer Systems, and a Twitter page, at Imagineer System. I hope you enjoy this tutorial, and have a great day.